friends I hope that you are all having a wonderful day so in this video I'm going to be walking you through the process of how to make an envelope flip book I am using the sunny days collection just because I am in the mood for some bright colors on this day and so I've already picked out my papers and I have my envelope punch board out and ready to go so next I'm just going to show you on camera how I would make an envelope and then how I would assemble the flip book. I do have a video of this already on my channel if you guys would like to check it out. I use the Maggie Holmes Chasing Dreams collection. So I will link that down below in the description in case you're interested in watching that video. But in this one we are making a 5x5 five five flip book. So all I'm going to do is just find where it says 5x5. Five then the next thing it says to do is to trim the paper to eight and a quarter by eight and a quarter. So because we're making a square flip book, we're going to cut a square out of the paper. So I've already trimmed down this paper. And now I'm just going to show you how to punch it to make the flip book. So the next thing it'll tell you is the score line. So it says to score at four and a quarter. So all I'm going to do is just line it up to four and a quarter right here. And you can see the measurements on the side. So I line it up and then I punch it just like that and then I follow the line that is over here on the side of the board all the way up and score with my little scoring tool and now you don't need to use the measurement anymore once you have that score line made now all you're doing is lining up the score line that you just made to this little notch on the punch so this says score guide here and all you do is just put your paper all the way to the top of the board and then line it up you punch again and then repeat the same process that we just did already, just making the line here, turning it once again and lining up the line, punching it, and then scoring. And this definitely took me some practice whenever I first got it. I made a ton of envelopes and messed all of them up. So make sure you just practice on a piece of paper that you, um, like just like a scrap piece of paper, that way you don't mess up the paper that you plan on using for the flip book. So this is how it should look. You have a square in the middle, in case you can see. Uh, so you can see all the four score lines and then you have the triangles on each side. So now what we're going to do is go ahead and begin folding. All of these in. So you can see here that these ones overlap and that is completely fine because once you fold this one over, this one covers up the overlap. So you will have to play with it just for a second and figure out how it works. So obviously it doesn't work that way. You could try it like this way, but it doesn't cover up the um, top of it all the way. So just kind of play with it until you figure it out and get it right. So now that I know that these two are the corners that are going to be showing, I'm just going to take the other side of the scoreboard and use it to round the corner. You could also use a um, corner rounder punch if you have one, but since this is already out, I'm just going to use this. So now we are done with the envelope punch and all I'm going to do is just begin assembling this. So I'm just going to add tape on both of these sides. Now, if you know you're going to be putting something somewhat heavy in this, then you would definitely maybe want to use, go for some glue or some red lime tape, but I'm just using my um, double-sided tape that I have right here. So it doesn't have a super strong hold, but it is pretty permanent and it will last. And I'm not putting anything heavy in these anyways, just want to make sure that it keeps the shape. So this is what your envelope now looks like. So I've already done that to all of these other three you can see so they all are the same exact size so you can make this as big as you want but I did want to keep it somewhat small because I'm going to be setting it in a smaller box this time around so now I'm just going to line it up in a pattern that I like um, I think I like this so now we're going to begin assembling this and it's fairly simple but I will show you how to do this so all you need to do is take your back envelope or actually this one would be the cover so you want to make sure that you have your cover in the front so what I might do is I think I would like this pink one to be the cover so I'm just going to rearrange these just a little bit just like that so now this one's in the back and this one is my cover so this one is Make sure you use the cover first, and all I'm going to do is take my next envelope 
and I'm going to turn it to where the pattern shows up and I'm going to line up this line right here with this one right here. So what I'm going to be doing is sliding this triangle flap all the way on the inside of this one and making sure that lines up and it does. You can fold this over and see. So now all I'm going to do is just add some tape in there. And glue definitely works just a little bit better for this, but because I'm trying to do it fast, I don't want to wait forever for the glue to dry. I'm just going to use tape. Just be kind of careful and precise when you're using tape because once you stick it down, you won't be able to move it much. So have that one down. And next we are going to do the same thing again and this um, flap is going to be kind of like the spine or the binding for the envelope flip book so um, once we get to the end I'll trim it down this is just going to go on the back side to hold everything together um, you can trim it down now if you want to if it's going to be in your way but I'm just going to fold it over for now so that way I can see the one that I'm working with so once again you're going to take your envelope with um, this side facing up not the square side and then on the alternate side you do want the square side to show with the flap with the pattern paper overhanging and you're going to slide it into the envelope and make sure that those score lines line up and i'm actually just going to trim down this corner a little bit because you can kind of see it's just overhanging um, sometimes we don't always score perfectly which is no big deal, it's an easy fix. So all I did was just trim that and I'm just going to do the other side just to make sure that it fits in there very well and don't have any problems with that. So now I'm going to add the tape to the back side of the flap. You do kind of want to get tape kind of near the score line. I don't remember if I did that on the last one but you do want there to be some reinforcement there just because that's where it's going to be turning at. Okay, so now we have that one done and you can see, just slide it in there and then it flips open. And now we're going to do the same thing for the last time. So I'm just going to make sure this score line is nice and well scored and then slide it in here. I'm going to check and make sure it fits first and it does and that's what it's going to look like whenever it is open. So I'm just going to add tape right by the score line and then by the sides and then we are going to slide that in as carefully as we can so just to make sure that the tape doesn't stick down in the wrong spot. There we go. Seal everything into place and fold it over. And then lastly, we are just going to tuck this piece into there. I'm not going to add any tape just because you don't really need to. Um, this last one, you're not going to really be adding anything in. I mean, you definitely can if you want to, but there's not like a closing flap or anything for it. Um, if you if you would prefer, you can also just tape it on the outside, which I might do that. I'll go ahead and do that. In previous, I think in the previous one that I made, I just tucked it in, but we are going to just close off this flap, make sure that the binding is sealed and can hold everything in. There we go. So this is the flip book, and if you see that some of the sides are overhanging, it's fine. I wouldn't worry much about it just because um, they are all the same size, so you don't have like sizes going down as you make them so it might look like that um, but not to worry because once you decorate it it really won't be noticeable so now I'm going to show you guys how I decorate this and I hope that you are able to assemble it properly if you guys have any questions feel free to leave me a comment down below um, and I will try to do my best to answer any questions that you have about the making and assembly of the actual flipbook itself and now we're just going to move on to decorating. Okay, so to start off with decorating, I know that I want to have some sort of binding just to hold everything shut. So I'm out of seam binding right now. So the only type of like stretchy trim or material that I really have is some tool. So I have this blue tool 
that I think matches and it's very light it's not like a bright blue like whenever I have it out you can see it's just very like translucent so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to apply some red line tape right here on the back across the center just so that way this backing is um, going to like kind of hold in the tool and I may put something on top just to make sure that it's really sandwiched on so now I'm going to cut it and I want this to be pretty long so that way I can tie a bow and I don't know how long um, or how chunky this is going to be so I'm going to give myself more room than I probably really need um, just to be on the safe side so I'm going to cut that now sorry if you can't really see it that well on camera but um, yeah like I said it's just very light so I'm going to cut this and then I'm just going to try my best to fold this tool in half all the way down um, so that way it's a little bit more sturdy and will hold everything better um, but it doesn't have to be perfect just mainly for the back so this is the middle of it so I'm just going to press it down here Try to make sure that that tape is sticking to both of the pieces and then to kind of sandwich everything in I'm just going to look for kind of a larger piece of ephemera to put on top I think I like this one it's pretty big so I'm just going to add some hot glue on the back of this and then press this down on top of that red line tape just to make sure that everything will stay in place and I have like very very little hot glue left so hopefully this will work so I managed to get a good amount of hot glue on there, and now I'm just going to glue that on. It's a little bit crooked, but it's okay. Now I'm just going to press it on the back so I don't burn my hand. And there we go. So that way, whenever everything is done, I will be able to tie a bow. Um, I definitely could have waited <laughs> until the end because now I'm going to have a lot of tool in my way, but I'm just going to pull that above. But I wanted to go ahead and do it while it was on my mind because I tend to forget about stuff like binding and closures a lot. So while it was on my mind, I just thought I would go ahead and do it. So now I want to decorate the front. And I have these two pieces here that are both blue and kind of neutral. So I feel like it will look good whenever the bow is tied. Um, I'm definitely not going to be as crazy with the decorating as I normally am just because this is... Um, I made it smaller so that it could stay flat like I mentioned before this is going in like a very a fairly small box so I want to make sure that there's room for everything else but I'm just going to staple these together since this is acetate I find that that is the best way to adhere it um, if you don't mind staples that is some people don't like staples on their project which is fine too um, and now I'm just going to use some more red line tape I try to make sure um, use like hot glue and stuff on the front covers just because you know that's going to be the part of it that is the most exposed to everything else in the box so I want to make sure everything stays on very very well and I love the acetate pieces in this collection so so much they are just so pretty and I know some people have like a love-hate relationship with acetate I definitely think it's kind of hard to um, adhere like everything that you put behind it will pretty much show through unless you have like the, spe the special acetate glue slash tape um, but I just use staples and I think it looks fine so I like that as the cover and then I think I want to pull in like a little piece of chipboard so let me see what I have here I have this beautiful blue bathing suit that's really pretty and then this butterfly right here actually has like all of the colors from these pieces as well as the cover so I think I'm gonna go with this one right there on the side and then I want to use a sentiment so I like this one right here that says happy with you it's more blue very blue theme for this cover so I'm gonna put this right here I am just going to have to use some foam um, since this is a little bit higher than the rest of it. And I think I might be out of foam, so I'll be right back and I will be back with some foam tape really quick. Okay, so I am back with a fresh roll of foam tape and I'm just going to cut this one in half. And I am totally loving 
playing with this collection. I really just broke it out for um, the first time in a long time. Whenever I first got it, um, I was so excited, but then with everything going on in my life, I think it was like um, just a really busy time for me, so I didn't have as much time to play with it as I thought that I would. And then new collections came out. Heritage came out pretty close to this one, I think. It wasn't that far after that I bought Heritage, and I remember um, putting, so I had everything out for sunny days on my desk and I just felt so frustrated because um, it was like fall and I wanted to use darker colors and everything so I ended up having to wait to play with this one so I definitely don't mind though because I do have like a lot of the collection now I think I would have been more mad if I put it away after only using a few little things from it and then not really having much left so I am happy that I have so much of it still and the, amaz and the amazing thing about it is, is that you can actually find this collection at Joanne now. So, um, certain pieces anyways, like the, um, they have certain papers there, they have a project pad where you can get the stickers, they have the 12 by 6 sticker sheets, um, they don't have the chipboard or anything like that, but they do have like the bows and some other mixed media type of stuff. So, this is the cover for now, I think that that's all that I really want to do. Actually, I have some little flowers here um, I don't really like the colored ones too much for this so let me set those aside in case I want to use them on a different page but I do like this little white flower I think that's pretty so I might just maybe right there is cute so that's how the cover is looking and I think that it is just so adorable and very dainty and girly and then it matches the tool really cute uh, really well so that way whenever I tie the bow it will look really cute so that's all for the cover I might come back later and add some like little enamel dots or something but I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the next page so I'm gonna do all of the flat pages first um, just so that way um, I don't know, I feel like it's better to do the flat pages first and then come back to do the envelopes because I don't really know what I want in the envelopes or anything like that. So um, I'm just gonna go with the pages that are blank. So this collection has quite a few like larger pieces, which I really don't mind. I know some people really don't like that, but um, I think it kind of takes some of the process out for you and it's like nice layering pieces, so. I find them fun, but I do think that if it's only small pieces, then it's then it's frustrating. So I like that summertime because it matches the blue really well, and I'm not the biggest fan of like these black and white pieces though. I don't know how you guys feel about that because the Heritage had a lot of black and white too, which um, I'm all about color, um, so I don't really like when they add black and white, and I think black and white only looks good with certain color schemes and with how bright everything in this collection is I just I don't it's not my favorite but um, there's really not too much black and white so I don't mind it so I have this so far and let me look in my sticker sheet I'm wanting like a tag or something to put behind it and I'm not seeing anything that's jumping out at me in here so let me look at the cut apart sheet that I also have out because this came with some tags that are fairly fun. My cat's got onto it, as you can see. <laughs> but maybe the seashell. Cut this one out. Okay, so all I did was just cut this out of the paper pad and then, um, or out of the paper, and then hole punch it there. And I do like this in here. I like the way that it also works with the pink. So some small layering and then I also found the sticker sheet or the sticker book I guess and I thought it would be fun to add something in the background um, these are clear so it, it is just a little bit hard for them to show up as well on the paper but I thought that it would be cool to add something so maybe this would look really awesome in the background I'm gonna try it because with some of these stickers, I just don't know what I would really use them for, so. Oh yeah, that looks cool. That kind of looks, um, is the same as the acetate piece on the front. 
So I really like that. And then I might come back to these later throughout the flip book to decorate. And then lastly, I do want to add just a little icon or sticker. And this one catches my eye just because um, the colors. So I might even put him behind here like that. I think that's so cute. And I'm going to, oops, just going to staple this um, sentiment on and make sure everything is in place. I'm just going to maybe add another one up here. I'm sure you guys will be tired of seeing staples before this video is over. <laughs> I tend to use them a lot. So that looks awesome. I really love that especially with that sticker in the back. So I'm just going to add a little bit of glue. So that looks awesome. And then just to add in a little bit more pink, I have these last bit of jennies here that I'm going to use. So here I have this next page. And I think it might be fun to add a little bit of gold. There's not that much gold in the collection anyways. So, so I have this um, ribbon trim that I got around Christmas time from Dollar Tree. And I love adding this on um, pages like as a banner. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to cut a little piece off. And then I might even layer it up on some paper. So let me see what kind of papers would look good. So I have this scrap and then I also have this one, which I think this one matches just a little bit better with the umbrellas. So that's the one that I'm going to use. And I'm just going to trim off the top and the bottom. And now I'm going to cut the actual banner piece or the banner shape. So I'm just going to cut to the middle here and then go to the corners down here and then aim my scissors towards that little center piece, that center line that we cut. So that is, there's the first one. And now I'm gonna do the same thing with this piece of ribbon. I'm just going to make this a little bit more straight. So that is really cute and I'm just going to staple this one again. And then I'm going to trim off the top just a little bit. And now I'm going to use some of that red line tape again to put this down. So now we have a little touch of gold, which is very nice. I like that, that's pretty. So I'm just going to once again go to the ephemera and look for something. That is very pink and that matches. I like this one too. Um, and I love this bag as well as these sunglasses. So I'm gonna maybe see if I can find a way to incorporate these. I'm just gonna layer those. I might even just pop the sunglasses up on a piece of foam. Move everything up so that you guys can see. So now we have sunglasses and this little bag. And that's a little bit too big. That one doesn't quite match. Um, I might go back to the cut apart sheet again because I, as you can see, I really don't have too much ephemera left from using it before and I don't think that that one matches that well. So let me see here. And what it would be really cute um, to do is maybe add like a piece of washi tape so that way this looks like it's taped in a little bit. So let me see here. Make it look like this is just 
taped in. I'm just gonna rip off this piece. Oops. So I think that's cute. And then I'm just gonna do the same thing for the bottom. I think maybe I might come back to this piece here. Or maybe a piece from the chipboard would look good. So I have this little watermelon, which I love, and this bicycle is cute, but I kind of want to keep the color scheme going. How about another bird? <laughs> So I'm just going to pull this purse up, I didn't stick it down all the way, and go with this little bird here, he's so cute, and use just another piece of foam tape behind that. That is so cute, and then I'm going to add this little sentiment down here at the bottom that says sand and surf. So to finish this off, I'm just going to go in and add one of these little pearls. One more. You have lots of different blues going on in here, but I love it, I think it's so cute. All right, and that is another page that is done. That one was a little bit more difficult because of the busy background, but I still think it turned out cute. I love the little sunglasses on there. So now we're going to do the last page, which is this polka dot, and then we'll come back and do some of the stuff on the actual envelopes. So we're not looking too chunky yet, so that's, that's good news. <laughs> and I really like that this one's kind of plain, so I feel like we have a little bit more wiggle room to um, decorate. I'm gonna go back in with some of this chipboard and see what I like. I really love the um, the tones in this flower right here and how it matches with the umbrella. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull that out and then maybe put that down here in the corner. And then looking at the sticker sheet to see what we what else we can add. I'm gonna add these pink flowers in right behind it. Something like that. This butterfly is adorable. I'm going to add that in with some foam tape. And I really only do foam tape if um, something is keeping it from being level. So like the chipboard. Um, would rise it up and I do want it to make sure that this is sturdy on there so I'm just going to be popping it on the one side of the butterfly if that makes sense and um, I try to keep these types of projects pretty flat so that way it will fit love that that's so cute I might even let me see if it's too late yes okay so I'm gonna add some gold thread around this And that gives it just enough of a touch to make sure that it still is bouncing off the page. Now I did want to go back to the sticker sheet like I mentioned. I think I want to just add in some of these little leaves behind it. Loving that, and now I just need a sentiment or something to put over in the center. And I'm gonna go back to the one that I used on the last one. And, and I just wanna find a way to incorporate this. Um, so I'm going to look through some of these little stickers that I have here too, because I kind of forgot about them and I wanted to use them too. And there's these gorgeous little leaf motifs, as you can see, like this one here. So I wanted to find a way to incorporate some of those. So I'm just going to kind of go for it. Um, I 
And now I'm just going to put some of this on um, the word on some foam tape once again. So that is super cute. Um, and maybe just add in a little bit of hearts to fill in some of that blank space right underneath it. And then this green one at the top. And then maybe right above it, I'm also just going to um, add another little sentiment just to tie in a little bit more black since we added that leaf. Um, I'm going to put enjoy the ride here. And I love that. That is so cute. And now we're going to go in and decorate some of the actual envelope parts. Now I do want to keep this fairly simple just because um, you don't want to have anything that something here and then something here is what causes things to get really chunky. So I'm gonna keep everything fairly flat and just try to reach for the stickers and not the chipboard as much. Um, so I like that. And then maybe this little girl on a float. With this little piece of ephemera there we go and then I'm gonna add in this little sentiment at the top that says summer vibes it ties in with the Navy okay so that's pretty much it for that one um, maybe a little flower here alrighty and this is that side done I did just add this little heart in there off camera um, but it's not any dimensional on the other side so it will close properly so that's cute moving on to the next one with the stickers again I like this little bathing suit here and this little and then something maybe to go behind it that would be cute so let me go back in here I'm also going to add in this little seashell on the other side behind the sticker. the sticker too that says magical moments I'm gonna add in this little heart to match the bikini on there and I think that that is all for that one or maybe this little sentiment up here too well I don't want to overwhelm it with any more sentiments Maybe this bird. There's a lot of birds in this collection, if you can't already tell. So I'm just going to add some tape here. Put that down. So that's really cute. And moving on to the next one, which is the last one. Um, I don't wanna put anything too close to the bottom. I'm gonna try to keep it close to the top on this one. I love this tennis racket and this little birdie on there. So I think I'm gonna find a way to use that. And this sentiment right here that says, look on the sunny side. So let me figure out 
what we're doing here. I like this one because it's long and then and then down here at the bottom I'm gonna add a little seashell reach for some enamel dots just add a few at the top here tie in some colors I'm gonna add this little heart at the bottom for my stash I've been trying to use up some of my little hearts and stuff so I like that I think it's cute um, maybe one more little popsicle quite a few stickers but I still think it's cute so now I'm just going to tape that on and that is the finished product so that is everything I think I am gonna add just a few more of these little enamel dots to the front since I use them throughout some of those little blue ones and then maybe a pink one at the bottom tie everything together and then let me see if I want to add anything else now that I'm here hmm. I like this heart here I'm just gonna add that on the side so that is everything you guys I hope that you have enjoyed watching this process video and I definitely hope that you will head over to Jamie's blog and check it out it is so beautiful I love it so much and I'm so happy and honored that she asked me to be a part of it and to feature this flip book on there for you guys um, I have all of the dimensions for everything as well as a step-by-step -step process of how I made this so please head over there show her some love show her some support um, you guys know it's really important to support each other with how small of a community that we are of crafters. So yeah, thank, thank you again, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!